band and loops, one of the staples of the orthodontic laboratory. I had five of them. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to put my camera up and I'm going to record myself bending these. This is the shortened version of the whole boring video, but if you'd like to see the whole boring video, it's over at designerretainer.com. Uh, before I get into too much detail on what a band and loop is, this first one is, uh, it's kind of a recurve version. As you can see, I'm, I went forward with the wire around the canine and then I recurved it back. Some doctors like this design. It's real stable uh, around that canine. It kind of wraps around it. Uh, but it's kind of bulky in the mouth a little bit if you're not careful. You'll notice I'll bend these little ear parts down, kind of make a saddle with it or over the arch, over the the uh, the edentulous, the toothless area. So you see I, I, how big it looks. Um, and I'm, I'm making some final adjustments. Uh, kind of make a little, hold it better. Uh, so there it is. There's one kind of version that we, we do. Um, do. It, it's just almost straight back. I do put a little curve uh, in it just to kind of hug the tooth just a little bit so that the, I doubt, you know, it's going to move back and forth very much, but uh, you see I'm uh, lingual and buckle up the tooth where it touches last, and I just go straight back toward the band. So a little history on these. These are um, uh, space maintainers. You see how I'm contouring it to the arch there, uh, make it more comfortable. Doing a, a uh, hourglass shape. I to kind of get them away from the cheek and the tongue. If you get them too st stuck out there too far, it'll irritate the cheek and the gum. So I like to um, contour them in, but not too much. You still want to leave room for that tooth to grow in uh, so it can at least start to poke through. And then once it does, the doctor will remove the band and loop and that tooth can grow in. So back to what I was saying before, this is a space maintainer. It is designed just to hold space. This kid has lost their tooth or has to have their tooth pulled too soon. And when that happens, the adjacent teeth, the abutment teeth, tend to drift toward each other. So if, there, if there's not a tooth there to hold them back, they'll start drifting toward each other. They'll lose that space, and there won't be enough room for that bicuspid to erupt into. And they'll have to get um, some major braces work done to open up space to let that bicuspid come through. So this is kind of a preventative measure. Um, it's designed to stay in there a while, so I'm contouring it to make it as 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 comfortable as possible for the patient, and that functions the best for the doctor. So I'm taking my three prong, just doing some light contouring. Again, I like a little bit of an hourglass shape. Uh, and so now I'm just kind of checking it, uh, making sure it goes, hugs tightly against the band, not tightly where it springs up, but uh, enough to where when I get solder around it, I'm not having to put a lot of solder. And it's not going to be a big, huge solder joint. You got to grind down. Where I like it, uh, you can kind of see the shape of it. I'm using a little zap it here. Um, it's got a little spray activator. It takes about three seconds to set up. Uh, this is something we don't do anymore. We don't zap it right against the abutment tooth, right against the adjacent tooth, because we found out that when we set it. I'm tightening up the, uh, see how they kind of crossed over each other. Now I'll pull them apart, and there's my hour. Oh, if I can stay under the camera, there we go. Contouring the front of it to kind of wrap around the tooth a little more. Uh, just for stability. So I'm going to mark it. So I'm, one of those marks is a cut, one of those marks is a bend. Don't confuse those. You have to start over. So I bit straight up, and that makes like a little handle for me. So I tightened up that corner. It's against the band. So that's where I want to cut it. But I want to now some doctors like the band and loop to be up against the 
the highest part of the of the contact. Uh, sometimes you don't. But uh, if if you do have a real tall tooth, try to put it right on the contact, not in the undercut area. They get, then the doctor can't get it in or out. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna cut this one. Let's see. We're about seven minutes into this. Uh, we got two done. So these are actually pretty easy to make. And if you're in-house, sometimes you do have to get one arm. Um, kind of, it it depends on the, the teeth. Sometimes they're, one tooth is at an angle and you got to kind of match it. So there was something I didn't like about it. I'm kind of tapping it, seeing how it springs, uh, squeezing it. So this is one thing that I do. I take the uh, a stone, a Mizzy heatless wheel, and I score or I uh, grind down on the ends that are going to get soldered. I like this. It, 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 it does two things. One thing is it slims it down to where I can use less solder so it's more comfortable for the patient. And it causes mechanical retention for the solder. So, uh, and if I can get my fingers off of there, you can see how now the wire is tapered. Um, so I'm, let's see, I'm going to contour it down the arc some more, checking, making sure it's still touching the band. Keep checking. Yeah, I think I'm pretty close. Uh, there we go. There's the zap. And again, I'm, I'm zapping. We stopped zapping at that point because that zap, it's pretty tough. Uh, it's great for solder, really great for soldering because you used to use wax and you really had to heat shield it uh, to get the wax off. And also, you can actually make some adjustments with this. I couldn't have done this with wax. You see how that wire was too high and too low on that one, too high on this side? I'm making some last minute adjustments. So you can get that hey, thanks for watching. Supply. If you'd like to see more in this Band and Loop series, be sure and hit the subscribe button. If you'd like to see the full, unedited, 17-minute version of this, head over to designerretainer.com. Thanks.